Why does KKR see a business opportunity in autism? I think it's a really interesting space. It's a space where there's been tremendous unmet need. And so there are you know, a lot of patients who could really benefit from better treatment. Uh, it's a space where diagnosis has really improved and increased. And so there are a lot more patients and families that are realizing this problem exists, that this disorder is out there. Uh, but there's still a massive dislocation between supply and demand in terms of the number of practitioners that are able uh, and set up to treat autism. And so we think it's an area where you can really solve that unmet need by building a professionalized organization and having therapists in a lot of different places. And that's really what got us excited about this space. What is Blue Sprig? What exactly is it going to do? So Blue Sprig is a platform that we set up with a really well-credentialed CEO who comes from the pediatric nursing space. Uh, and has a passion for, for this space uh, in autism. And uh, it's going to be a business where we take really the best of what's out there in terms of the, the therapeutic offerings, ABA being the center of that, applied behavior applied. analysis. Right. And we're going to uh, really treat it as the disorder across a spectrum that it is, right? So it's not a one size fits all model. ABA will be the heart of it. We really are going to look across the severity and across the different needs that different patients have and make sure we can take the best of what's out there and really build a platform around it. Uh, part of that will be organic, so we'll, we'll grow it ourselves. We've already got some centers that we've acquired and we're ramping up. Part of that will be acquiring businesses and rounding out the infrastructure that we have. Isn't it unusual for KKR to be starting a company? You know, it is and it isn't. I think as we've morphed to, to build our growth equity effort in healthcare, which is an effort we started four years ago and just closed our first dedicated fund for it, I think these kinds of investments are going to become more common. And the thesis was simple. If we don't see out there in the marketplace a platform that's ready-made, has all the different attributes that we want to go purchase, let's go build it. Uh, and I think that building is not exclusive of just doing it ourselves. We can also buy elements. So it's a great combination of the ability for us to ramp organically, but also aggregate through acquisition. Ali, you surely know that for many people, the optics of this effort are going to be a bit challenging, right? KKR, barbarians at the gate, entering one of the most emotionally charged markets in healthcare. How do you address that? I think our thesis has always been in healthcare on going where the need is, going where the patients are, whether we've played in the pharma space and med device and services. Our goal has really been about delivering very good care. And you can see that in our investments historically in HCA and in other providers. Um, so I don't think we shy away from the provider space at all. And I think for this to be a good investment, we have to be mindful of the different constituencies, which at the heart of it are patients and families, are providers, which we will employ and work with, and then the payer community that's going to ultimately pay for a lot of these services. And I think if you get that combination correctly, uh, you'll be delivering great care while earning a return. How do you change the way that people might be inclined to think about you and think about your firm? We're talking about parents here, right? Mm -hmm. You sure. want them to think of you as white knights, not as Vikings. Sure. I think it's a very good question, and I think a lot of the research we did before we got to this investment, we spent months looking at the space, and a lot of those months were spent talking to families, patients, providers in the space, what's missing, what do you need? And I think if the, the care that we deliver is quality-centric and really patient-first, I think that will go a long way toward making people feel uh, that we're doing the right thing for the patient here. How big is the market, and how much money is KKR prepared to invest in it? It's a very large market, and it's a market that I think has been underserved and frankly underdiagnosed for a long time. You know, by, by some estimates, one in 68 children are somewhere on the autism spectrum. Mm -hmm. So that's, that is thousands of patients potentially just in the U.S. alone. In terms of the capital commitment we've made, we've made a large commitment from our healthcare growth fund, um, and that's a fund that generally invests equity checks of, a, of, of up to $100 million. So we've made a sizable investment here. And the view is we will continue to draw down on the investment as we see additional opportunity in this space. How fast is the market growing or demand for services? And um, who are you going to be competing with? I think the interesting thing about the market is, uh, in a sense, we're competing against, uh, on one hand, no real offering. And then we're competing against Because it's sense, so fragmented it's and there's so many fragmented. gaps. And in another sense, we're competing with you know, some local providers that are smaller. I think the way we will really succeed here is if we're delivering care in areas where the access to care has been very limited, and so there's really no good offering. And in other cases, we're partnering with local providers and helping them grow in a way where we can prioritize research in the space, we can prioritize the range of offerings to these patients and families, and really do it in a symbiotic way. In terms of the growth, I think what's also interesting is there's an element of the market right now where 
there is already growth to be had because there's a bunch of patients who currently exist who aren't getting treatment. And then obviously this market continues to grow as more and more children grow and this problem is diagnosed increasingly. Why clinics and not schools? Because as kids age, so much of the treatment they receive for their autism spectrum disorder happens in the educational environment. Sure. I think it's a holistic view. So we have started with a couple clinics because our view was the center-based care and the market we started in, which is Texas, was the one that made the most sense for that market. I think over time, the idea that we can be in patients' homes, we can be having patients at the centers and also looking at the educational spectrum, all three of those I think are part of a holistic offering over time. This is growth equity. Growth equity has a shorter time horizon than private equity typically. What's the exit strategy after three or four years? Yeah, I think the great thing is our fund is set up as a traditional private equity fund in terms of the, of the duration and the horizon. So we're not in a rush. Uh, I think the great thing about this space is there is a lot of white space to go. So we can grow in a lot of different ways. And the way we really make good returns for our investors is to compound equity at attractive rates of return. And if we can keep doing that, there's no reason we would truncate the, the holding or time period for our investment. So it might go for five, six, seven, maybe even 10 years? It could absolutely go longer. And I think we're really limited by how, how quickly are we compounding our equity and how good care are we continue to deliver and finding opportunities to partner with patients and families. Now these are clinics, they're not hospitals. That's correct. But hospitals are under a lot of pressure. Is KKR taking a look at hospitals as potential investment opportunities given the healthcare environment right now and what's happening to them? Obviously, you know, I think the history is out there. We were very large and leading investors in HCA, which is the largest hospital in the US. Uh, we like that space. We spend time in that space. You know, for this growth strategy, that would sort of be beyond the scope of what we're looking at given the equity check and scope. But it's absolutely one of the areas that we would look at you know, from our broader PE investments across KKR.